hello everyone this is dr shornamoyen and welcome back to my channel hope you all are doing good in today's video we are going to talk about the nerve supply of the diaphragm and there will be a special bonus discussion at the end of the video on a very special topic so make sure you watch the full video to understand the whole process first of all you need to know why this nerve supply is very important let's talk about it you know this is the diaphragm you can see this is a barrier between your thorax and your abdomen and apart from this, it also plays a major role in your respiration. It is indeed called the chief muscle of inspiration. Let me to explain a little. So I need to bring a notepad for it. Oh, wait. Where is my drawing pad? Yep. So, what is that? Okay, yeah. Uh, oops. Let me to draw. Suppose this is your thorax and this is your abdomen. Thorax and this is your abdomen. And between them you have this muscular portion, the diaphragm. So this is actually the diaphragm. In the diaphragm you have two domes, right dome and left dome. And between them you have this central tendon in the center. It is purely skeletal muscle and you know that in case of skeletal muscle when they contract, they are pulled towards their origin, away from their insertion. For your easier understanding, let me to draw here. Suppose this is a bone and this is a muscle. This portion is the origin and it is inserted below. So what happens when this muscle contracts? it will be pulled towards its origin in this direction so away from its insertion now as the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle the same thing will happen with this diaphragm i mean if it contracts then it will be pulled towards its origin away from its insertion so see in case of diaphragm it has a peripheral origin and it is inserted in the center so if the diaphragm contracts it will be pulled towards the periphery away from the center in this direction so ultimately for the pulling from the peripheral side it will flatten out a little bit and then you will have a figure like this so you can see the difference previously the diaphragm was raised but later you can see that it became flattened now if it becomes flat or you can say if the domes become depressed then the vertical diameter of the thorax will increase right see previously it was a smaller now the vertical diameter has increased that means you'll have more space in your thorax and your lungs situated there they'll get more space so that they can expand and can accommodate more air so the air will enter in your lungs and that is how your inspiration occurs then you can say if the diaphragm contracts then inspiration is happening so this is in the contracted state on the other hand when the diaphragm relaxes like in the first picture then the dome will go upward and the vertical diameter of the thorax will decrease and there will be less space for the air so the air will go out and you term this condition as expiration this is the main mechanism of your respiration so see how important the diaphragm is in your inspiration Hence, it is called the chief muscle of inspiration. So people often forget which one is the contracted state and which one is the relaxed. So you can have a screenshot. This is contracted state and this is relaxed. And when it is contracted, the inspiration is happening. And when it is relaxed, then the expression happens. So I can write here inspiration and this is the expression okay yeah so this is how the diaphragm is maintaining your respiration and you can clearly see this contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm is very important to maintain your respiration now this diaphragm itself without having a nerve supply cannot do anything the nerves supplying the diaphragm they actually are maintaining this contraction or relaxation so the intact nerve supply of the diaphragm is necessary for maintaining this condition now the main point which nerves are supplying the diaphragm so let's go back to our figure i mean the model so back to the model again let's me to remove the drawing pad i do not need it anymore 
I mean for today anyways okay so let me to bring the nerves here wait give me a minute where is the nurse supply uh how to bring it and let's see they didn't show the coastal nerve here but yeah there is coastal lure five intercoastal nerves so here's the nerve supply the diaphragm is supplied by the phrenic nerve so you can see these are phrenic nerves then you have the lower five intercostal nerves. These are the intercostal nerves, you see, in between two ribs. These are the intercostal nerves. As you can see, these are situated in the intercostal space. In, you know, the space between two ribs, this is called the intercostal space. And the nerve here is known as the intercostal nerve. So lower five intercostal nerve and the subcostal nerve. Achha. Somehow they did not show the subcostal nerve here. Subcostal nerves are meant to be here, in here, yeah, but they did not show. You know, subcostal means uh, uh, actum below the um, costal cage, subcostal. So this space is known as subcostal space and the nerve, subcostal nerve, had to take its origin from here. Okay, anyways, so these are the lower five intercostal nerves and there should be a subcostal nerve here so these are the nerves that are supplying the diaphragm so you have the phrenic nerve then you have the intercostal nerve and lastly by the subcostal nerve now the diaphragm has both motor and sensory nerve supply the motor oh actually i want to bring wait let's see can i do something else yeah, finally I brought the subcostal nerve. So here is the subcostal nerve, okay? In the subcostal space. Okay. So so these all are the nerves of the diaphragm. The diaphragm has both motor and sensory nerve supply. The motor portion oh shit, wait, let me to remove the sternum. I have to hide that. Yes, nice. Then I also need to hide this. I mean the skull. Okay. Go away, skull. It's a giver. Anyways, you look your shovel. Hide. Yes. Okay. I was talking about this headless body. I mean, it's diaphragm. The diaphragm has both motor and sensory nerve supply. The motor portion, it regulates the contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm, which is solely done by this phrenic nerve. No intercostal nerve or no subcostal nerve is responsible for this contraction or relaxation. You can see there are two phrenic nerves, the right phrenic nerve and the left phrenic nerve. So for a clear understanding, I just wrote down the numbers on the bones. So this is cervical 3 vertebra, and cervical 4 and cervical 5 vertebra. And you can clearly see that the right and left phrenic nerves, they are originating from the cervical region. And they have their origin from the cervical 3, 4 and 5 number segments of the spinal cord. So yes, these are the phrenic nerves which have their root on cervical 3, 4 and 5 segments of the spinal cord. And they are entering into your thorax and ultimately they are supplying the diaphragm. So the right phrenic nerve ultimately supplies the right dome of the diaphragm up to the right margin of the esophageal opening. So this is the esophageal opening and this left phrenic nerve, it provides its motor innervation to the left half of the diaphragm up to the left margin of the esophageal opening. So that's the motor supply solely, solely and solely by the phrenic nerve. And this motor supply is responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm and thus it is helping for your respiration. And the sensory portion that is responsible for carrying the sense or sensory information from the diaphragm to the brain. That is done by the phrenic nerve than the intercostal and subcostal nerve, thrice of them. So the motor supply was purely done by the phrenic nerve, but the sensory sensations, they're carried by the three nerves, the phrenic nerves, intercostal and subcostal nerve. So the right and left phrenic nerve, they actually supply the central portion of the diaphragm, mostly the central tendon of the diaphragm. And the lower five intercostal nerves, you can see, they are supplying 
you can see here they are supplying the peripheral portion of the diaphragm so you can see the central tendon it is supplied by the phrenic nerve I mean in case of sensory uh, supply and the peripheral portion they are supplied by the intercostal nerves and the subcostal nerve see the subcostal nerve and lower 5 intercostal nerve okay so in case of uh, motor supply the right phrenic nerve was supplying the right dome of the diaphragm up to the right margin of the esophageal opening and the left phrenic nerve was supplying the uh, left dome of the diaphragm up to the uh, left margin of the esophageal opening okay but in case of sensory supply both the right and left phrenic nerves they're supplying the central tendon and the peripheral portion is supplied by the intercostal nerves and the subcostal nerve okay so if they ask you what is the nerve supply of the diaphragm then you have to say the motor supply is only by the phrenic nerve and in case of sensory supply there are two portion one is the central and the peripheral the central portion is supplied by the phrenic nerve and the peripheral portion it is supplied by the lower five intercostal nerves and also by the subcostal nerve so now the bonus discussion for you don't you have a question in your mind that the diaphragm it is actually present between your thorax and your abdomen so it had to be supplied by the nerves present here but why the hell the nerves from the cervical region or from the neck has to travel a long way to supply this diaphragm see when you were just a fetus the diaphragm first appeared in your cervical region i mean in your neck so initially the diaphragm was not in the thoracic abdominal junction it was indeed in your neck the musculature of the diaphragm actually developed from the cervical myotomes I mean the myotomes that were present in the cervical 3, 4 and 5 levels. So, okay, let me show you a figure then you will understand. Where was that? Okay, yeah. So you see, this is a fetus and uh, I mean it was here actually the previous state. So this is the cervical region. Initially it was maybe the heart, yeah. Yes, and, and this is maybe the liver. In between them, the, the diaphragm had to develop here. So the diaphragm initially was developed in this region okay and the musculature of this diaphragm came from the cervical 3 cervical 4 and cervical 5 myotome and you guys must know that the myotomes are innervated by the same segmental nerve supply that means as the diaphragm has developed from the cervical 3 4 and 5 number myotomes they will also have the nerves that are supplying the myotomes and these myotomes they are supplied by the same segmental nerve supply that is cervical 3 4 and 5 and together they are forming the phrenic nerve so the diaphragm was developed here and they were supplied by the phrenic nerve but later your height is increasing and also the length of the vertebral column is increasing upwards and downwards at the same time the diaphragm also descends to the thoracoabdominal junction here you know the diaphragm is not present in your neck now it is present in the thoracoabdominal junction so it actually descends now when the diaphragm descends from the neck to the thoracoabdominal junction it also drags down the phrenic nerve with it so ultimately though the diaphragm is situated in the thoracoabdominal junction it has a nerve supply which is coming from the neck and this also explains why the phrenic nerve is so long and since the most peripheral portion here of the diaphragm is derived from the mesenchyme of the thoracic wall I mean the most peripheral portion is developed from the thoracic wall indeed so it is generally accepted that some of the lower intercostal nerves that were supplying the thoracic wall they also supply the peripheral portion of the diaphragm so yeah that's it so in this video we came to know about the importance of the diaphragm in case of respiration and also the nerve supply which is very important and you saw why the diaphragm is supplied by the nerves of the neck region and side by side you came to know why the phrenic nerve is so long in its course in the next video inshallah i'll explain about the diaphragm paralysis or or maybe i'll discuss about the hiccup uh, which is very common uh yeah so guys this is the end of today's tutorial thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you have liked this video then please give a thumbs up and uh, if you want to see more videos like this in future then please subscribe my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so see you in my next tutorial till then take care and goodbye